good morning everybody good morning good morning good morning i'm about maybe two minutes early i wanted to spend some time saying good morning to everybody and uh, welcome to an amazing week i just i just sense something has started in the realm of the spirit and i also sense that um you know there is a a fresh anointing that's getting ready to boil up on the, each of you who are here and so i just want to say god bless you and uh just we're gonna focus this week man and all is well and uh yeah all is good all is good man we're gonna talk about uh how to keep your peace because that's what's going to be under attack and you're gonna you're gonna win you're gonna really really win and so yeah thank you for all the birthday greetings praise the lord we had a great day yesterday it was amazing service the outpouring of, of love that my my family my church my leaders my partners friends spiritual sons and daughters it was it was amazing it was uh it was awesome and um and i'm just so blessed to be a part of a family of believers you know this grace gang is awesome and uh yeah yeah yesterday was awesome you guys are awesome and uh we're just grateful apologies for friday i understand we had some technical things that were happening but uh we're here live and ready to go this week and uh, ready to get stirred up excited about la coming up this friday and um yeah the best is yet to come the best is yet to come so welcome to the grace gang this morning and um if um you are joining us from wherever you're joining us let me know we want to send blessings your way we declare that in jesus name you are blessed today you hear me you're blessed going in you're blessed coming out you're the head and not the tail and above only and never ever again beneath so hey we welcome you guys from uh sumter south carolina Abuja, Nigeria, Boise, Idaho is in here with us. We send blessings to you today, setting that thermostat. Send blessings to those of you in Kansas City and New York and Virginia. Uh, we say you guys are blessed today in Houston, Texas. Botswana is in the house with us, joining the, great, the Grace Gang. London in the UK, Michigan, Florida, California is up this morning. Uh, Staten Island, New York, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and, um, Omaha, Nebraska. Chi Town is, is with the Grace Gang this morning. Connecticut, Alberta, Canada. Uh, we send blessings to you guys this morning. Indianapolis, Birmingham in the United Kingdom is joining us. Nambia is joining us today. The Bronx, New York, World Changers Church, New York. We love you guys. Augusta, Georgia. Uh, Michigan, South Africa is with the Grace Gang this morning. Tampa, West Palm Beach, Florida, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We say you are blessed today in the big in the International City College Park, Boston, Memphis, Houston. God bless you guys, and uh, you know Jacksonville, Florida. New York City, Trenton, New Jersey, Fayette County, San Francisco is in the house with us, joining the Grace Gang from uh, Lagos, Nigeria, Abuja, Nigeria, West Point, Georgia, New Mexico. Uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. Chicago, Atlanta, Alaska, uh, San Bernardino, California uh yeah all is well all is well in the name of jesus the bahamas god bless you guys in jesus name um 
so in Germany is in, in, in the house with us from the grace yeah, joining the grace gang. Yeah, Germany is all the platforms. Praise God. We got some testimonies here. DC, beautiful Barbados is here with us. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning, guys. Amen. God bless you. We say you're blessed in Jesus' mighty name. We say peace, peace over you right now in Jesus' name. All is well. All is well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Grace Gang. Praise God. Portland, Oregon is here with us today. We send blessings to you guys in the name of Jesus. New Orleans, Louisiana, Saginaw, Michigan, Maryland. God bless y'all. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We pray for Michael's biopsy of his throat tomorrow. All of that will go well in Jesus' name. We agree with you in the name of Jesus. Savannah, Tulsa is in the house. Ding. And uh, welcome to the Grace Gang. We're live this morning. Um, and we declare that you are blessed today. You're blessed going in, blessed coming out. You're the head and not the tail. You're above only and never, never again beneath. Portland, Oregon. Praise God for you guys. West Virginia, you are blessed today in Jesus' name. We declare your blessings. You are blessed today. Yeah, good morning. Oh, national in the house. Yeah, praise God. All is well with you today. Excited about sharing with you today. I think you're going to be blessed and encouraged. Yeah, the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Indianapolis is in the house with the San Antonio in the house with us in Jesus name. Welcome Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And um, yeah, man, all is well. Praise God. That's what we say. San Diego, Johannesburg, all is well in Jesus name. Let's go ahead and continue to set this thermostat. Let's go ahead and get Psalms 91 equipped. Somebody says, why do you keep doing this? Well, first of all, I believe consistency is the key to the breakthrough, bro. And secondly, because it's a good thing that our heart be filled with grace. Come on, say this out loud with me. I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday, because God is my refuge and, my, and the almighty God of my home. No evil can befall me. No plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life and he will show me his salvation. I declare in the name of Jesus that I am Psalms 91 equipped and all is well with me in my house. In Jesus mighty name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Praise God. Hey guys, again, I want to say, 
thank you, thank you, thank you for all of the birthday well blessings and wishes. I, I appreciate every last one of them. Um, I, I felt I felt loved immensely. I felt cared for. I felt thought about. Um, and I and I'm I'm just I'm grateful, thankful, and um, uh, the members of our church, family, friends. I'm just so grateful. And I thank you guys for it so, so very much. If it was ever a time that I celebrated a birthday that I was truly blessed to celebrate, it would be after all of the stuff that happened. And uh, praise God, I'm alive. And praise God, I live to celebrate that birthday. So thank you for the birthday witches, wish, which is the birthday wishes, the belated birthdays, just you guys are amazing. The Grace Gang, praise God. And the Wednesday Night Crew, glory to God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I, I, I'm thinking about, all right, so what are we going to talk about here this morning? How do we how do we kick Monday morning off And uh, as we approach February? And you and I both know uh, there's some stuff that's getting ready to go uh, go down. And at the same time, we also realize that in the realm of the spirit, uh, I believe, um, you know, based on, you know, the scripture that says when sin abound, grace does much more abound. So you're not going to find wickedness happening on an increased level and the grace of God not happening even more so. And so I thought, well, you know what? I, th I think the main thing, because I said this to myself um, sometimes last week, I said, and I went over this statement again, and you've heard me say it. If something in my life is causing me to have to spend my peace, it's too expensive for me to be involved. And, and I, want you to, I want you to look at that very carefully this morning. Is there something going on around you that's 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 charging your peace that's costing you costing your peace i mean it's taking your peace from you okay uh the fact of the matter is um you probably don't need you, you probably need to disconnect from it. it you know if it costs you your peace it's it's just too expensive and um and and i need you to just kind of think about that i, I need you to think about that um and, and you have to do something about that because I believe the most important asset you you have and the most important asset for you to maintain is your peace. And I also believe that Satan understands this so that every attack that uh, may come your way may be a attack primarily towards your peace first. And and I don't know if you you know, I can relate with people when 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 they talk to me about what they're going through. I can seriously relate what happens when you don't have no peace and that thing you, you cast it over on the Lord, but it keeps coming up in your in your mind. It keeps coming up in your thoughts. You rehearse it, you nurse it instead of dispersing it. And. It, it, it's just so important. And I, so I, I, I said to Taffy, I said, you know, I'm going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to double down on pursuing and maintaining my peace and that God will give me a, a discernment may not be the best word, but a way to recognize when my peace is being sifted from me and to begin to locate the areas in my life that maybe I open a door for something to to uh, take my peace. Your peace is your most valuable asset. Please hear this. Your peace is your most valuable asset. And you may have to fight a tremendous fight to maintain it, to keep it or to get it back. OK. Am I talking to somebody this morning to maintain it, to keep it or to get it back? I think with peace, you can be healthy. I think with peace, you can be happy. I think with peace, you can have wisdom. You can be progressive. 
Well, what happens when that piece is under attack? You can't be at your best. And so I want to I want to look at what the scripture says, because my prayer for each of you today is that God grant us peace. And Jesus has done that. So let's look at some scriptures, starting in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26. And then later on, I'll show you how the greatest robber of your peace. Listen to this. Is a guilty conscience. It's a silent robber of your peace. And uh, so I know today and tomorrow we're going to stick with this a little bit so we can talk some about guilt and how to overcome it. And, um, you know, we just, you know, you just got to look at that, man. If it costs you your peace, then it's too expensive for you to be involved. And therefore, disconnect may be um, uh, the move or redirect may be the move. But. Dude, I, I ain't giving my piece up. I'm just not going to do that. And 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 uh, I want to show you why. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Wow. And 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 it, it it's uh this is the ESV Bible that, that I'm reading, but you know, he'll keep you in perfect peace. And he, he says, where's your mind? Where's your mind? Now, this is something I, I learned a while back. It's it's where's my mind? What, what am I minding? OK. Um, and most likely, you know, if your mind is stuck on something else that's robbing you of your peace, then obviously you're going to have to get your mind on the thing that grants peace. The um, New Living Translation says you will keep in perfect peace, all who trust in you, all who thoughts are fixed on you. Well, you know, man, that's that's something you have to probably start doing with your mouth. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I thank you. I put my mind on you. The peace comes when you put your mind on God, when you put your mind on the promises of God, when you put your mind on the word of God. So if um, if you're in a situation and you feel like, well, Lord, I just don't have any peace. Well, this scripture, Isaiah 26 and 3, it's showing you how you can start retrieving your peace. Uh, he'll keep you in peace. And, and that's what you got to do. So here's 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 the devil's strategy. I need to get your mind off God and get your mind off trusting God. And I need to get your mind on the problem, on the trouble, on the drama. And then I got to get you to start trusting yourself and every everybody except god all right that's 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 satan robbing you of your peace ladies and gentlemen i say it i'll say it i'll say it again it's your most valuable asset there is power that can be released in the life of a believer who knows how to protect his peace okay who knows how to protect his peace the peace described here is first the corporate peace. Uh, and then it comes from, uh, it's also the individual peace of a person whose mind is stayed on God. So the source of such peace is righteous and, and sovereign and saving God. It, it's, I keep my mind on God. I'm in peace. Get your mind on God today. It, you know, fight to get your mind and your thoughts on God today. Fight to do that. And then in St. John chapter 14, this is a pretty cool one. St. John chapter 14 and, and verse 27. Uh, I, I I thought, well, I'm just going to just kind of talk to you about it, but I, I thought you might be able to use some scriptures to refer to if your peace is under attack. St. John 14 and verse 27. I love this. He says, I am leaving you with a gift peace of mind and heart. That's a gift. That's a gift, man. In the ESV uh, translation, he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So a couple of things here. This peace comes from Jesus. So this is Jesus' peace. So how do you make a distinction between Jesus peace and other and another kind of peace? Well, 
Jesus peace can take you through the stress of life, the troubles of life, the attacks of life. And what Jesus peace does is even in the midst of those things, you still have peace. And this kind of peace is not something that you earn. This kind of peace is something that has been gifted to you that you have received from him. I'm leaving you with a gift. The New, New Living Translation says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and peace of heart. I tell you, man, every Christian, let's strive for peace of mind. Let's strive for peace of mind. You, you got up this morning or you getting ready to go to bed and you have allowed yourself to engage in somebody's drama. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. This gift of peace. He said, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. The world cannot give you this kind of peace that even in the midst of situations, you, you're still peace at peace because you trust God. Right. He says, so don't be troubled or afraid. Don't be troubled or afraid. So that's the next thing. Fear and trouble will try to come in to try to steal this gift from you. And you've got to make sure that, you know what? I am not going to be afraid. You just got to say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to be afraid. I mean, God loves me and I know he loves me. And I know this thing looks crazy, but I'm not going to be afraid. And at that moment, you know, you can say that. And at that moment, it feels like the, the the fear and the trouble just intensifies in your in your your soul and your emotions and you just got to just open your mouth up and say no i will not fear i have jesus peace you literally have to talk yourself into into receiving what jesus has already said sometimes people allow panic to rob them of this gift and panic is groundless fear you're afraid of something that hadn't even happened yet. And when you when you get into panic, you open the door for panic to try to cause you to give away your gift. You have a gift of peace. You have Jesus peace. Now go ahead and receive that right now. Say out loud, I have Jesus peace. And, and take that, man. Take that. Don't allow yourself to be, watch this word I'm getting ready to use, distracted by fear and trouble to ultimately try to rob you of your peace. I declare peace, peace in your life right now. I declare peace, peace over every situation. I declare that peace, peace be over you, even in the midst of worrying about a loved one or worrying about financial things. Trust God, okay? Keep your mind on him. Uh, I'll keep you in perfect peace when you're when you, when your heart is set on me or when you trust God. Trust God. You know, peace comes just by when you make your mind up. I'm going to trust God, and you start looking around. You say, you know, I don't, I don't have, I don't even know what to do anyway, and 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 I don't even know how, the first step to even take with this, but God does. And Lord, I'm going to trust you. And there's a level of peace that you can find in trusting God that the world just don't get it. And, and I'm telling you, do not give up this gift of peace. Do not throw away or walk away from this gift of peace. Do not spend this peace because you're wrapped up in somebody's drama. Praise God from whom all blessings, uh, all blessings flow. Now, look, look at this one, John, since we're in John, look at John. 16 31 and 33 john 16 31 and 33 all right I'm, he says jesus answered them do you now believe behold the hour is coming indeed it has come when you will be scattered each to his own home and will leave me alone yet i am not alone for the father is with me I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. And the Amplified, I mean, the NLT Bible says, do you finally believe? 
but the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. You know, Jesus is speaking here. He says here on earth, you'll have some trials and you'll have some sorrows. He said, but take heart because I've overcome the world and because I've overcome the world, you can overcome the world. And I love it when he says, I say what I say to you so you can have peace. So the first thing I see here is that peace comes from the words of Jesus. There's something that happens when you tune in to the words of Jesus. His words will bring you peace because, hey, he's overcome the world for us. Praise God for us. He's overcome the world. And like we heard yesterday, we just got to learn how to yield and make our mind up that, you know, God, you're living through me. That was a great message yesterday by Andrea, the crucified life. Just learn how to live the crucified life. And like God, you know, I trust you. Do 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 your thing through me. I'm going to hold on to the peace of what you said. I'm going to hold on to the peace of the word. I'm going to hold on to the peace of, of uh, the gift that you've given me. And when I find myself struggling in my peace, I'm going to go pick the Bible up or I'm going to go pick, you know, the sermon up from Sunday. I'm going to go and, and, and listen to a song that ministers grace to me. You know, it's so important that you fight to keep peace fight to keep your peace. I tell you, it is it is it is a part of Satan's agenda to try to steal your peace and I'm telling you, don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Now, here's some things that he can do to do that. Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 through 7. Philippians 4 6 through 7, he says this, do not be anxious about anything. How many of you find yourself anxious by a lot of stuff? Anxiety comes, man. Don't, don't be anxious about anything. And I, and I tell you, sometimes we're anxious about more things than we should be anxious about. And we walk around with anxiety. And some people even have anxiety attacks. He says, you don't need to be anxious about anything. Why? Because in everything, by prayer and application, you can, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And he says, you know what? You can have peace when you talk to God about it. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. I love what he says here in the New Living Translation. Let me look that up for you real quick. In the New Living Translation. I mean, some people... They join us on the grace gang. They say, what are y'all doing? Y'all just like talking scripture talk or what? No, dude, we eating food. We eating food. We're equipping ourselves for the day or the evening. We, we're, we're ready, man. Ephesians 4 and verse 6 says this. Never. Oh, I'm in Thessalonians. I'm about getting ready to read one. 4 verse 6. <laughs> I said, I know. He says, don't worry about anything. Are you still worrying about something today? He said, don't worry about anything. I'm asking you, are you still worrying about something today? Is there something that you're worrying about today? Is there something you woke up worrying about today? And he says, don't worry about anything instead. So what do you do instead of worry? Pray about everything. So stop worrying and go, God, in the name of Jesus, I just bring this before you right now. And I, and, uh, I cast the care of it over on you right now. And, and I thank you. Uh, for your grace and your mercy. And 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 I thank you, Lord, that uh, I decide right now not to worry about this, but uh, I turn it over to you and I declare that all is well. OK, so don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Well, what do you tell God? He said, tell God what you need. Tell God what you need. I love this. Tell God what you need and then turn around and thank him for all that he's done. Now, it doesn't say tell God what you need. And then when you see it, thank him. He said, tell God what you need. And right after you tell him what you need, go ahead and thank him for it. Like you already got it. That's that's just that's you believe you receive right now. 
Lord, I instead of worrying, I'm going I'm going to ask and and tell you what I need and then I'm going to turn around and thank you. All right? You see what he's doing here? Turn around and thank him. Hallelujah. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he's done. He says, then you will experience God's peace. Absolutely. You see how that'll work? God, here's what I need. I thank you for it right now. And then you experience God's peace, which, ex which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and your minds as you live in Jesus Christ. So while the enemy is trying to attack your mind and your heart, you're focused on what you asked for, that you thanked him for it. And you're focusing on the peace that shows up in your life and that peace that shows up in your life. Uh, you experience that peace and that peace begins to guard your heart and it starts guarding your mind. And, and then from that point on, if the attacks continue, you just open your mouth and say, Lord, I just praise you that uh, you've already answered my prayer. Oh, and then that, that, that fear comes again. It's because the number one fear that the devil wants to put on Christian people is the fear that what God promised won't come to pass. He wants you as a Christian to be afraid that what God promised he would do won't happen. But you pray about everything. You thank God for it and you receive that peace and it'll guard your mind and it'll guard your heart. I'm telling you guys, protect your peace at all costs. So, you know, tomorrow I want to get into this because I want to talk about how guilt is one of the strongest robbers of peace how guilt is one of the strongest robbers of peace. So if you have experience where you, you have uh, suffered with guilt and you just can't figure out how to get rid of it, I mean, you know, that's what Jesus died for us. To, so we don't have to have a guilty conscience. We can have a righteousness conscience, you know. And that's what condemnation does. When you're still wrapped up in condemnation, you, you open the door for a guilty conscience to come into your, your mind, into your life. Amen. Praise God. Well, I hope that uh, gave you something to work with today, something to pray about before you go to bed tonight, if you're on the other side of the world. And um, I just think that the best is yet to come in your life. And so I just send you the blessing of peace today. I send you the blessing of peace today. Glory be to God. I'm about to shout. I send you the blessing of peace today. Peace, peace, peace. I pray that over your life today, that, that, that there'll be a calm to come over you. You understand what I'm saying? That there'll be a calm come over you, that there, that, that there'll be a spirit of ease that comes over you right now. And you just say, you know what, God, all is well, all is well. And uh, build boundaries around your peace. OK, there's just certain certain things you're just not going to go. I'm, I'm, I, and it may be talking to somebody who's kind of, you know, emotional right now. Let me build boundaries around that. And we did they get they self together and come to the end of their self. And I don't want nothing robbing my peace right now. Or you're around a backbiter. They just they just gossip about everything. No, no, I don't want to hear that right now. No, I think I'm going to guard my peace right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, hey, uh, this is awesome. And um, the power of God works in your life to do exceedingly amazing things today. And we love and appreciate you so much. Hey, guys, this coming Friday. Yay, yay, yay. It will be in Los Angeles, California for the first uh, convention of the year. Los Angeles, California, February the 2nd. And um, uh, we'll have two services on that day, one at 10 and the other at 7. Now, none of these services will be online. Um, this is going to be, you know, private and intimate and you got to be there in order to, to get a hold of what's happening. But I am going to, to teach one of the most important, I think, messages that the Lord has ever given me and just really work it out uh, with us. So join the Grace Gang in Los Angeles, California, February the 2nd. If you have not registered, please do it today. Go ahead and make that happen today. 
It's going to be so good to see you. You know, last year I just I just came uh, off that procedure. So I was I was skinny and and a, a little weak and just waited on the Holy Ghost to kind of help to support me to do what needs to be done. But I have recovered and I am strong and loud and ready to go, bro. We're going to shut the corn and give God the glory. So I look forward to seeing you in Los Angeles, California this coming week. Praise God. Let's the grace. It's the gathering of the grace gang. That's what it is. It's the gathering of the grace gang, bro. We're going to have a good time in LA. Also, if you've not registered for the uh, women's conference, the radical women's conference, we call it bloom. I'm telling you, this is going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. And, uh, that's March the 14th through the 15th register today. And I know you've been hearing a whole lot about it. Some of the footage of some of the former radical ladies, uh, conferences on television. Now it'll be on this week, but, uh, go ahead and, and, and get registered. And, uh, yeah, man, we, we, we're ready to do some amazing things. And then finally, Grace Life 2024, the reunion. What? The reunion. Now, those of you, uh, I contacted like 12,000 of you and you're going on a journey with me and I'm letting you know, you know, some stuff that we're doing. Well, I, you pay attention to your notice. Uh, we got we got an opening ceremony with somebody that's going to bless your heart. I'll give you information about that. July the 11th through the 13th, make plans to join us at the reunion in College Park. Hey, guys, have a great day today. Awesome time today. Keep your peace. And again, thank all of you for the birthday wishes. It was awesome. It was just made me feel good to be alive and still in the land of the living. Praise the Lord. God bless y'all. I'll see you tomorrow. Have an amazing day, okay? A good day tomorrow in Jesus' name. Bye-bye, everybody.